Welcome to the Introverted Doctor Podcast, the podcast that uncovers myths, mistakes, and misconceptions that keeps healthcare professionals back from living their best life at work, home, and play. I'm Dr. Lalit Chavla, and with each episode, I'll be focusing on different aspects such as communication techniques, mindset, routines, tools, and strategies with the goal to show how to eliminate anxiety, trip-ups, and unwelcome results that come from ineffective communications. Now, if you're joining me, you know that this is the third part in a series on how to give presentations that are impactful and memorable. And um, I've been asked to do this after speaking at several conferences recently, and uh, people have said, you know, how can I give presentations that are more effective and more meaningful? And uh, I've been honored that they would trust me enough and ask that question because that is a really good question. It's not something that we get taught in medical school on how to give good presentations because I don't know about you, but we, I'm certain that we all want our presentation to be meaningful and effective so that people walk away with something important. We don't go through all this effort of creating the slides, creating our talk, flying out to the conference where we're asked to speak or the effort that we're doing without the hope that it will actually make an impact. So I really thank those people who asked me and um, and I really hope that you find this helpful. So if you've joined me, you know that I'm using this framework. The first question was really asking about the goal. What is the goal that of your presentation? Making sure you're clear. And in that episode, I, I, I said there was three key things, and that was to empower, educate, and entertain your audience. That's the question. And there's some good examples if you go listen to that episode about ask, answering that question. And then the other part is once you've answered that, it's important to understand what your needs, you're doing a needs assessment, something that gets over missed, that, that gets missed by so many people. They don't think about it. I know when I become a bit lazy and I don't think about that properly, it changes the quality of the presentation and it increases anxiety. If all of a sudden I thought I was only speaking to a room full of 100 people, now I'm speaking to a room full of 250 people, changes everything, it changes everything. And then it's like, oh, I, was, I thought I was only speaking to 10 people. But then they said, oh, no, we had more people coming in. Now all of a sudden, I needed I need a mic and I don't have a mic. Now I'm not able to project to the level I wanted to. So those are key things and that's about needs assessment. That's a very valuable um, episode to listen to. And, and uh, maybe a quick comment on there. I just thought of it right now. Now say you do, you, you've gone, uh, you're going to do a talk and you think you're only gonna to speak to 50 people and all of a sudden you find out you get 150, 200. So that's, then it's important to have a backup plan and make sure to the members, if they say, who are people who are hiring you to speak, saying, you know, how many people are gonna be there and what happens if it's bigger? Do you have a microphone? Do you have PowerPoint? Do you have the facility for me to deliver that presentation in a bigger manner? So the more clear you are in terms of your needs of the facility that is crucially important. But I'm going to talk about so I think of the W5, the who, what, where, why. Why is really about the goal. What is your goal? Uh, who is your audience, your needs assessment? You know, where is important? Where are you going to be speaking? And then this part is really the how to delivering the message in a way that it makes an impact. You could be very clear about why you want to deliver this message. It may be the most important message for the audience to hear. It may change their life. But if you haven't delivered it in a manner that resonates with them, it'll fall flat. You, I'll repeat this story again, but when I was a kid, my dad took uh, us to the Grand Canyons and we got up early and we saw a bunch of people waiting for the sun to rise. We were all sitting on the west side looking 
looking westward and all excited. We never bother to even ask the other people, is that where the sun is coming up? But anyway, the ranger came by and said, hey, folks, uh, you guys got here real early. It's still dark. I imagine you're here to watch the sunrise. And we all said yes. Well, you need to shift your focus because the sun is rises on the uh, right behind you. So you're going to miss the sun sunrise. So that's an example of really, boy, we were just we did not know the how. And this is what this podcast episode is going to talk about is the how. And that really means the vehicle. How are, what's the vehicle we're going to use to deliver that message? As I talked about in one of the earlier episodes was that we have four main learning styles. You know, we have the visual, auditory, kinesthetic and reading and writing. Um, visual is very important when you're using and that's why PowerPoint is helpful. And kinesthetic, kinesthetic and reading and writing, the more you can use, very impactful. Auditory is very important and useful. It's something that gets missed and people don't think about. In an episode coming up very soon, I recently interviewed Roger Love in Hollywood. He's a voice coach to all the famous stars that you can think about movie actors, you know, such as Bradley Cooper, Reese Witherspoon, Joaquin Phoenix, Angelina Jolene, uh, comedians such as Will Ferrell, Steve Carell. He coaches people like Tony Robbins, Susan Ormond. Um, the list, you know, he, he's the, and other singers, the Jackson Five, the Beach Boys, Stevie Wonder, Maroon Five, Selena Gomez. The list goes on and on. And in that interview, I had a sit down with him and we talked about voice and how our voice can really make or break everything we do in terms of creating an effective presentation. So keep an eye out for that episode. It's coming up really soon, maybe after this one next week. Um, so let me get to it. Let me talk about the different vehicles. So I, I just mentioned that the voice how we use our voice. There is a lot of misconceptions about how our voice is used and properly and improperly in terms of how we deliver a message. If we deliver it quickly, if we don't pause, if we don't use different melody, rate, rhythm, it changes everything. How many of you have heard presentations that put you to sleep? I think, you know, you get that monotone, stationary type of speaking, just puts you to sleep. There's no variance in the tone. The melody is not there. We've all experienced it. Maybe the most exciting thing that you've ever wanted to listen to, but if it's not delivered correctly, you fall asleep. I know personally, I try to work on the melody rate rhythm, so that I can become a better speaker. So but voice how we use our voice, key in terms of delivery, it's not something we many people think about. The second thing is stories. In one of the recent podcasts that I talked about was about the value and the art of storytelling. The best communicators are the best storytellers. And if and it's important to collect stories, ideas, and how you can use stories in your presentations, you should always be using some type of story in your presentations. Stories are engaging. Why do we read books? Why do we watch movies? Why do we listen to music? Music is one of the best examples of voice and story together. A good song will explain, a, a, you know, an idea or, or the the struggle that a person may be fa facing or or the romantic relationship. That's voice and stories mixed together. For more details, you can check out that other episode on stories. Very useful. And then humor. Now, you may be thinking, you know, I'm not very humorous. And you may also be thinking Lalit. 
your podcast is really not very humorous either. I mean, you're not using any humor in these episodes. And that is very true. But it doesn't mean that you can't use humor. And one way to use humor is by using cartoons. Cartoons, how many of you have ever seen a great pro presentation where they uh, use a funny cartoon? And it just changes the presentation. And you want to make sure, uh, here's a key thing, when you're using cartoons, um, make sure A, that it's copy that you ha you've either validated the source and you're not stealing the material. The second thing is make sure that people can read it. And if they can't read it, then just read out the cartoon if it's just a visual. So humor can be used and you can plant that in your your talks. And when you're using facts, you want to be careful in terms of how you present facts. I'm going to present that in a second right now. And if you're using PowerPoint or Prezi, you can use Prezi, but Prezi is not very popular. But PowerPoint is a very effective tool to use. And it's important to use the way you use your PowerPoint is also very important. If you've noticed, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a second. But here are some examples of really bad, busy slides where you, you may have seen this with all these graphs. And that just becomes very hard to look at. You have all this data that shows up this way, and that's very, very difficult. So when you're using data and facts, you want to make sure that you are using it in a way that delivers the message. And so if you really want to point out to something, you might, if it's, you do need to cover content like this, present it in a way that's readable and usable. And then you have to ask your question, if you're presenting it like this, is it does it meet is it congruent with the goal that you have in your presentation one thing that's useful is to choose the type of graph that you use pie charts are much easier visually you know when you see you're trying to explain something i have this one little pie chart here it's the things a zombie would do you know small portion eat your flesh another one eat your brain small part moan and then a big three quarter dance with Michael Jackson. You know, that's a big you can see that it's very visual. It's very key, easy to understand. And that's an effective way to use a pie chart. Pie charts are very handy. The other thing is when you're I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I've seen it so many times when people are using PowerPoint and you just simply cannot read the slides. Um, they may look good on your laptop. It, you know, purple may be your favorite color, but if you cannot read the font and if you can't project, get the projections right from a far part of the room, then it's not going to be very effective. It's better to keep the amount that you have on the PowerPoint slides to a minimum so that people can read it. If you look at my, I use black on yellow. Uh, or yellow on black because it, it, scientifically it's been proven that that is the easiest contrast to read from a distance. And so I use a, a different version of black on yellow because it just resonates and I know that the audience is going to read it. And I use a font that makes, and I don't use a squiggly font. It's, it's not going to resonate. People just won't be able to see it. So I hope you found this valuable in terms of making your presentations better. And it's, these are not very complicated ideas, but I think if you follow these steps and routines in when you're making your presentation, it will really make it simple. And if you forget anything particular, think about the W5 and the how. You know, asking those questions, who, what, where, why, and how, and where. So just if you think about it, those terms, it'll help you when you're sitting down to make your presentations. Keep it simple, keep it clear, and that'll make, I guarantee you, you will be an excellent presenter. Your presentations will be memorable. They'll be impactful. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen and to watch this and i hope you enjoyed this 
And if you think somebody could benefit from it or if you just want to share it, I would love that. Please leave a rating uh, on the podcast. It just helps other people find it better. And I would love to hear your comments. Please don't hesitate to contact me at Lalit, L-A-L-I-T, Lalit at theintrovertedoctor.com. I hope this meets you at a great time in your life, and I hope you have an awesome day. Thank you so much for listening, and I will keep you posted soon for that Roger Love interview, which totally will be will knock it out of the park when you see how we can use our voice in everything that we do. Thank you so much. Have a great day.